Ticker symbol MCO is up around 24% in the past year, and today we'll be looking at established company with pricing power, which I believe is a highly attractive stock, due to its solid fundamentals and its rising efficiency ratios. It also operates in an industry which has high barriers to entry, and it has high recurring revenue. So we'll be looking at Moody's Corporation, a financial services company. In their annual report, they say that they are a global integrated risk assessment firm that empowers organizations to anticipate, adapt, and thrive in a new era of exponential risk. They divide their offerings into four different service lines, including ratings, research and insights, data and information, and decision solutions. Its combined data, analytics, and all the different cloud-based software tools that they offer help their customers to monitor and manage their relationships, risks, and compliance. Their strategy can be divided into three different legs. The first one being that they have to invest with intent to grow and strengthen their core business. The second one, that they have to invest in integrated solutions in order to allow their customers to manage multiple risks, which essentially means improving the satisfaction of their different customers. And number three is to invest to successfully scale in priority growth markets. And when we look at their financial analysis, this company is brilliant. Their weakest ratio is return on capital employed, where they have a 14%, whereas our threshold tends to be 15%, so they're right in line with our threshold. Then, they have an interest coverage ratio of 10 times, which means that they won't have to worry about debt anytime soon. And they have a very healthy cash conversion of 104%, which is great for investors, as it means that they produce a lot of free cash flow. Now, they have a very solid profit margin of 65%, and a fantastic operating margin of 35%, which is way above our threshold of 15%. The revenues, gross profit, and net income of this company has actually been decreasing in the past. However, since March 2023, their financials have started to improve again. This is why their stock has risen in the past, and their net income is up 22% year on year, which is almost the same amount that their stock has risen. And when we look at the efficiency ratios, I don't think you can get some efficiency ratios that are more stable than these. Of course, the return on equity has decreased because in the past, they had very little equity and they were too over leveraged with their debt. However, now they're in a more healthy position. And as you can see, their efficiency ratios are in a pretty solid spot and they are rising quarter after quarter. Here is what I was talking about. As you can see in the past, they had a lot of instances where their total liabilities were actually above their total assets. And as we can see on the chart on the right, that meant that their equity was extremely small and at some points even negative, which in this channel we consider that a huge red flag for companies. Now, they have focused on increasing their total assets over their total liabilities, which gives them a solid equity, a better current ratio and a better debt to equity ratio. And when we look into the fundamental analysis, this company gets all eight ticks, it gets a perfect score as, first of all, it has low liability risk due to their extremely high interest coverage ratio. It has a very solid balance sheet as, first of all, they have positive equity, which is rising quarter after quarter, and they can cover all of their short term debts with their current assets. Now, they're extremely consistent with their cash flows and they are actually managing to grow these cash flows in an organic fashion thanks to their revenue also being able to grow in an organic fashion. And what this means, organic, is basically that they don't depend on purchasing other companies and conducting any other M&A activity in order to increase their revenue. By just expanding their offerings and upselling their current customers, they are able to increase their revenues organically. Now this company does pay a dividend and they have share buyback programs in place, which is wonderful as their investors get a lot of the free cash flow back in return for their investment. And finally, one of the most important things that I think you should analyze from a company, first of all, their pricing power, and second of all, their existing mode or competitive advantage, which I think that Moody's actually has both. Why? Well, first of all, it's the fact that they're able to charge whatever price they believe due to this being a software which they created and is pretty unique. Next, since they're actually adding a lot of functions to their software, they're including a lot of more characteristics more offerings and they're upselling their customers, they can increase the pricing at a faster rate than inflation, which a lot of companies cannot actually do so without losing a high proportion of their customers. And why do I believe that they have an existing moat or a competitive advantage? Play where there are two factors which come into play here. First one is the economies of scale and their reputation. 
they're a really super established firm in this business. And for example, any company that will need to get their debt rated needs to go to either Moody's, S&P Global, and basically those are the two leaders in this industry. Additionally, the economies of scale help them lower unitary costs and be able to improve their margins. As we can see, that is why their operating margin is up to a 35%. Another second component, I believe, is their retention rate and the huge amount of information that they have on their customers. They have a very, very good retention rate. It's extremely high, meaning that the majority of their customers are actually repeat, which means that they do not have to actually spend a lot on their commercial functions. And just by retaining their existing clients, they can make huge progress and they can generate a lot of free cash flow. Now, this creates an entry barrier for companies that want to enter the space because a lot of companies will just trust Moody's a lot more since they're an already established company, they trust their solutions, and they're satisfied with the service. Now, when we look at the dividend, they do pay a 0.76% dividend yield, which has been extremely stable throughout the years, and as we can see, the amount paid and dividends per share has been increasing at a pretty consistent stable rate ever since the past 4-5 or five years, and even longer before that. Now, in terms of valuation, this company will always trade at a premium, I believe, and right now it's trading at a PE ratio, which is the highest it has been in the past four years. Why? Well, because their earnings per share growth has been the highest it has been in the past four years as well. And now, when we look at this from a free cash flow yield, they're yielding a 2.55%, which in comparison to the long-term inflation rate of 3%, it does suggest that the company may be slightly overvalued. And when we look at the risk and possible challenges, I don't think that there will be any major risks to this company. The only one that I would focus on is their economic downturn or cyclicality risk. And the thing is that they do offer pretty cyclical solutions, especially because of their ratings business. This is highly dependent on interest rates actually decreasing in order to actually get more companies to refinance and actually get a lot more debt, meaning that a lot more companies will actually want to get a rating on their debt. And this is where Moody's actually comes in, as it is one of the biggest portions of their business. However, if interest rates are not decreased anytime soon, the ratings business will not grow as it is expected to, and their revenues will not grow as it is expected to either. Now, before we move on, please remember, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice, so please do your own due diligence. However, I do believe that this is a company which has a very strong competitive advantage, it produces consistent and growing cash flows, and it has acceptable high return on capital employed, meaning that it knows how to create value for the investor. So I believe that this is a great company and that it probably will be a great investment. However, I believe it is trading at a high valuation. So thank you for watching. As always, this has been the Cashflow Compounder. Please join the Patreon for extra content and there is a link in bio for a free stock if you join Trade Republic.